everyone, John Chow here from johnchow.com and welcome to another episode of Driving with John Chow. I just dropped my wife off at the airport. She had to take a, a quick trip to Vancouver. She'll be back in a couple of days. And so I guess the next couple of days, it's just going to be me and Sally. So we're going to do some daddy-daughter stuff. <laughs> One thing I noticed about living the dot-com lifestyle and you're going to notice this as you start to do the same thing. Uh, the thing you're going to notice is that the world gets smaller. I remember uh, when, well, when, I had, when, when we had no money, that pretty much, uh, I guess, our area where we go around was just, when I was growing up, it was just basically my neighborhood uh, in China. Basically, I never left my village. And when we immigrated to Vancouver, I was pretty much in downtown East Side, and that was, you know, the the area, but never gone much beyond that. But as I started discovering the internet and started making a lot more money online, and uh, now to the point where I pretty much can go anywhere in the world, the world has gone a lot smaller, gone a lot smaller. Now, it used to be that when we when we're going on a trip, whatever trip, we had to do some planning and stuff like that. But now, going off to Vancouver, just it's an impulse thing. It's just stuff like that. And I have a funny story I want, I want to share with you about that. Uh, as you know, I recently purchased a new house and we'll be moving in into it in a couple months after the renovations are done. But one of the things I had to do was I had to move some money around. And uh, I thought about at first, I figured, no problem, I'll just write a check from one bank account to another bank account because, uh, uh, so I had to, I wrote a check from a Canadian bank account to my Bank of America and I went to try to deposit it. And I figured even if they, even if they hold the check, they're only gonna hold it for like a week or so to let it clear and stuff, so it should be okay. So I, I go to the bank, I, I give them a check and, and <laughs> they look at this big check. <laughs> And so they had to like, we well, need to get it approved and they tried to run for the system and they, they couldn't deposit it. They just told me they couldn't deposit it because it was an international check from Canada, even though it was from my bank and from my account in Canada, they said that we have to hold it, I had to go for like international clearing and that kind of stuff. And basically, basically they said they're gonna hold it for like two months, two months. Uh, I said that uh, you can't hold it for two months. I'm, I'm closing this house in like 30 days. So I, I need to I need you to clear this check, and they said they couldn't do it. I mean, that that was just crazy. And in fact, they said uh, the only way to do it is to wire it. So they said they, they told me just to wire the money. And unfortunately, my Canadian my Canadian bank can't wire. The wire is done in branch. I had to get you go to the bank to do the wire at for an amount that big. So long story short, what happened was I had to fly to Vancouver, all right. I had to fly to Vancouver, $600 for a plane ticket, fly to Vancouver, go to my bank, wire the money to my Bank of America account, then fly home. Yeah, and of course, my, 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 my bank in Canada charged me 80 bucks to do the wire. And then Bank of America charged me another 10 bucks to receive it. So almost 100 bucks, almost $100 to wire the money and $600 for a plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is the one. What's this one of the reasons that I'm starting to look at Bitcoin? Yeah, because you know, but Bitcoin, in case you didn't know, is a totally decentralized uh, money system, and it would cost nothing to nothing to transfer the money. And it would have been cool, but uh, I'm pretty sure the seller who bought, who bought the house from wouldn't take Bitcoin. And I don't have that much money. I don't have too many bucks in Bitcoin, so yeah, it wouldn't work. But. Uh, would have been a lot easier. Would have been a lot easier. But uh, yeah. So uh, really, not a really, not a lesson in this episode. More of a, I guess, what you can expect once you achieve the dot com lifestyle. The world just becomes smaller and becomes much smaller. And suddenly, the world becomes your home in a sense. Because, uh, hold on there, excuse me. Yeah. Because, I remember, I know I got into this uh, sort of a little argument in a in one of 
in one of my videos, some guy was trying to, uh, and it was just you know, making some racist comments saying, go back to China, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know, it's, yeah, I get them once in a while. And generally I don't delete them because, you know, I just want to show them how stupid they are. But yeah, basically the comment was, go back to where you came from. And I go, first of all, I'm a Canadian citizen. I mean, you say go back to my country, I'll go back to Canada. But that, we'll forget that point. But the thing is, my, my, I just told him that uh, I'm a citizen of the world, buddy. All right. I live wherever I want because that's the beauty of living, living a dot com lifestyle. The world is your new home. And that's really it. Uh, I believe Tim Ferriss, when he wrote the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, we talk about a new rich. One of the things about a new rich is that uh, we're citizens of the world. We don't consider ourselves tied down to any, any one country. Yes I'm, yes, I'm living in America. Yes, I'm a Canadian citizen. Yes, I have a green card that I can live here. But honestly, if the reason I live here is because I want to live here. If I don't enjoy living here, I will be living somewhere else. And the great thing about living dark and lifestyle and the great thing about making money online and the great thing about being rich is that you are welcome anywhere in the world. All right? uh, countries welcome rich people because they spend money and they don't take up the country's resources. Like, uh, I mean, it's, just, it's really true. I don't, uh, if you look at it, I mean, I'm living down here. I don't, I don't take up the country's resources. I mean, the only thing I use up is the road. And I'm pretty sure the amount of taxes I pay here, I, I'm pretty sure I don't use up the, the amount of resources that I'm paying in taxes. Okay, so, all right. so uh, that's it for this little episode. Basically, uh, my advice to you is to be a citizen of the world, live the dot-com lifestyle, and the world is a lot smaller now. John Chow John Chow .com. Uh, Thank you for, for listening. Give me a thumbs up, uh, like and share my video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.